Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Dan, this is Watch Me With Watches. If you're new here, I hope you enjoy my take on this new release from Van Banner, a Canadian micro brand. If you're interested in getting a watch that's good value for money, offers good build quality, some quirky little details, which I'll cover in the review, then you're in the right place. So um, also another thing about my channel is I try not to be too serious. I like to keep it light and silly because in this crazy world we live in right now, it's sometimes nice to not take yourself too seriously and have a bit of fun. So. Let's do that. So the Van Banner AO, is it any good? That's why you're here. You've probably seen other reviews, but I hope you enjoy my take on this watch because everyone's different and they're all gonna have slightly different opinions and hopefully I can entertain you at the same time. But anyway, enough of that rubbish. Let's carry on with the watch. So basically the price, it was a whole weird thing. It's basically called a voted for price where I think it's effectively, oh, do you wanna pay 11 million pounds? Or would you like it for about two to $300? Obviously everyone voted for the lower, much better price. And that's the price you're gonna pay until the end of June, I think it is. I've put that in the stats and specs bit and the code you put in, which is voted price. So what I'm getting at is I think they're all gonna be sold out by then anyway. So I don't think anyone's gonna be really paying the full whack on these. And the first thing is that purple dial. Look at that dial. It is absolutely popping. As soon as I saw pictures of it, when Van Banner watches reached out to me, I said, I've got to have the purple. I've never, you don't see many purple dial watches. I think this is going to be a new thing, by the way. I'm not just saying that. I really think it's going to be, keep a simple sports watch like this. It is a simple watch. The thing that lets this watch do the singing and dancing is that gorgeous dial. And I thought of the Joker as well. <laughs> because we've got the purple dial. I'm going to stick it on a green strap a bit later on from my store. Um, just to show you how amazing a green strap looks on a purple dial watch. And then the red to go with the bit of red that the Joker has on his face. That's the theme I'm going for. And then you've got the smile sort of pattern here or shape of the word automatic. But that's been hand drawn, not on the, each dial, but the design was drawn by a calligrapher in Vancouver apparently. And I really like that. It's a little design element chucked in the mix. And I think, again, that's what you're paying for. You're getting these little quirky design elements and little treats. Loads of people have said it. You're all right. It's got very much Seiko 5-esque design elements about it. You're not wrong. Lots of watches can draw comparison to each other. And I'd say the Seiko is a really good watch to draw comparison to. Uh, the weird four o'clock crown position and the soft and smooth lug design and just the general look of it is very similar. The Myota in here. Very good to have a Myota 9039. The dateless version so you have the unscrewing of the crown and then it's just one pull out for the time adjust and that's it and leave it in that point there before you wind it back in that's your hand winding for the movement usual moyota lovely and light this is a four hertz movement which means it's not a high beat but it's close-ish to that so you've got a nice smooth sweep on the seconds hand there's a lot of s's in one sentence but it's yeah it's running really well decent timekeeping they generally run very well they're not amazing they're not as good as Swiss entry level movements, but for this kind of watch at this price point, generally very consistent. A good, good shock resistance, got a built in parashock, I think it's called. So you've got the thing that you don't have to worry about if you get this watch knocked about a bit and get it in the sea, you're going to go and do sporty things. It's going to be a tough movement. And you've got all the resilience of the other build elements, which, and talking about build actually, the build quality is very good. I'd say it's not perfect. I mean, the only thing I can criticize, the polished elements on this are a little bit lumpy. I can show you as best as I can on camera, but it's smooth-ish, but you can see, just see some rippling and graining in there. That's the only criticism. The brushing is very lovely. There's no sharp edges like there were on the uh, the parking meter too. There was a few little sharp edges, but this is much better. Screw links are really easy to take out. They were, There's no cross threading. It was not too stiff, easy to wind back in. All these little elements give you the idea of why something is good uh, for its build quality. So I've covered like brushing and the polishing, but then there's no specs under the dial. The polishing of the indices and hands is really good. Everything aligns really nicely. There's no imperfections to speak of on that front. I like the size, 38 mil, but it doesn't wear like a 38. And by that, I mean, it doesn't look too small. 
it's on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It wears very nicely. It's not too big, not too small. For me, I think it's a new trend of sweet spot. It used to be 40 mil was the sweet spot, but I think ditching the bezel on watches and having a bigger dial, in this case, a beautiful purple one, and allowing for more of the, just a visible space that you need to read the blooming time, makes a watch look bigger than it is, which allows it to weigh less, feel more comfortable. This is under 150 grams. It's only 11 mil high, including that dome sapphire, which is really good for an automatic movement watch. And it wears so comfortably. Because of all these micro adjusts, I would criticize this as being quite a large clasp. I don't think you need as many as six micro adjusts. But you know what? I'd rather have too many than not enough. It wears really well, very comfortable, and I don't have any problems getting this to fit me comfortably. And yes, I would agree again, this is proportionally quite a large clasp, but it's so what, you're not gonna see them both at the same time. It's under your wrist, it doesn't feel uncomfortable, and it enables the weight distribution to be really good. It's a bit unusual, I'd say as well. If you took away the colors though, it may be quite plain. So it's good that they're starting to play with colors more. So I'm thinking purple is definitely a, a nice, interesting twist. Go for a dark bronze or a copper or brown. That would be really cool as well. Those kind of different colors, I think are gonna be on trend or do some gear shape patterns on there. That's what you can do. Take a relatively bland case, and then just make it sing by having a beautiful dial. So yeah, very versatile watch. 100 meters water resist. I like the 10 ATM on there, that's really cool. Written out like that. Screw down crown, which is signed of course. I like that. Screw case back, nice and simple, straight to the point. And again, all the elements are of a higher spec watch. Solid end links, mill clasp, all that jazz. Fantastic, so versatile. And you can change this out to other straps, but I'm gonna try it a little bit later on, so hold fire. Before I show you that and do the strap show, a few little things I wanna highlight is, first of all, the weird crown. Uh, first of all, the position looks a bit odd, a bit ugly. Good size though, but it doesn't wind in as smoothly as I'd like. I think it might bed in, but it just feels a little bit stiff winding in, like it's not got a very neat threading. I think it's actually cross-threaded slightly. It's just a little bit awkward, especially with gloves on, but that's my fault. Polish sides, not so keen on the slabby aspect of it. I think if there was a bit of chamfering or a bit of design somehow to break it up a bit, that would have been really cool. And then the contrast with the brushed clasp and then the polished side of the bracelet looks a bit odd to me. But I like that it's all brushed on the top, which is really good. That's the bit you see the most, and it looks more of a sports tool watch. And then I suppose just to break up the all the brushed elements, having the polish. But you know what? I think it worked really well with an entirely brushed finish and let the dial again just do that bit of bling for you. This red seconds hand's a bit garish for me personally. Maybe a red seconds tip would have been better. Not 100% sure. Don't quite like the fact you have to have spring bars which are curved. That's a bit awkward, a bit thilly. Uh, so that makes strap fitment a bit awkward, but it's not impossible. You can do it. And I don't like the color of the AR. It's going to work better on the blue dial watch, but purple and blue is getting a little bit silly having these colors working together on that exact space. But the highlight of this watch as well, another good one is the Loom. It's really good. It's not like incredible, but it's very good for this price point. And Van Banner are well known for their Loom. And I'd say this does not disappoint. So let's start it off with this green strap. White, green and purple. Come on, it's the Joker, isn't it? So as you can see here, these holes for where the spring bars go in are relatively close to the case and see where it bulges out there. So when you put strap on, it just sounds a bit wrong, it's quite tight in there. So that's gone in, because I've done it before, but as you can see, it's squishing against there. It still moves fine, see? So it's not the end of the world. I think the curved spring bars are just to really enable you to not have any problems at all. This is the Pioneer FKM rubber quick release, perfect length, nice grainy pattern, just to add a bit of interest to contrast against this sunburst dial. And look at that. Don't you think green and purple work well together? I know it's quite zany and colorful, but you know what, it's a quirky watch. Why not go full quirky and have this kind of thing? If you don't want that, you can tone it down a bit. If you fancy a leather strap on here, I'll show you what it looks like on one of those. So what I'm gonna do is just take the standard spring bars out of this strap, which obviously are straight, and I'm gonna squeeze in these curved ones. It's good, see what it does, is it helps just conform. See, there's about maybe a mill gap there between the case and the top of the strap, so there's no binding or snagging or tearing of the strap there, so that's good news. That's really nicely provide those curved spring bars. I just think this again, another fun strap to try with. It's sort of dark gray with a crackle finish. I think it works really well on this watch. So if you wanna dress it down a bit or change it out, try something a bit quirky. One more and then we're done with the strap show. These straps are good because they're the right length and you get a nice bit of 
extra material to tuck back so it's nice and neat. And I'll make sure this gap here is even. So when you fold it like that, these are even either side. Now I'm gonna get it on wrist and see how it looks. So that's a good thing, plenty of material extra so you can tuck it back either this way or the other way, but I'll just quickly tuck it in there. See, so there's plenty there. Bit of color, green contrasting with the purple. And again, I think blue works well with this as well and it complements with the blue AR and the white just to go with the white of the indices. Really nice. So another winner from Van Banner. Thanks so much for sending it to me guys because I've loved reviewing it and I've loved sharing it with you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this take on it. I know other people have reviewed this watch, but you know what? I've got my own style of reviewing it and hopefully I've shared something new and interesting that someone else hasn't. And if you're watching this bit at the end, you've obviously enjoyed the video enough to stick with me to the end. And that will lead me on to maybe suggesting some more videos. Hopefully they're popping up here. I've done loads. If you fancy seeing more of me uh, do some more reviews and watch rebuilds and modifications and lots of other types of watches, stick with me and view some more. If not, I'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.